Let's talk about scaling because both of you guys own a lot of property here in the UK. Patricia, let's start with you. What does your portfolio look like right now? Oh, we're going into the detail. Let's okay, get into the details. fine. We need to get to it. Yeah, so my portfolio is kind of made up of a number of different flats and old properties that we've renovated. What's a flat for us Americans? So it's um like a broken down house so it's a house within a house but it's more like on one floor whereas a house is like multiple floors a flat is usually on one floor like an apartment okay that's what it would be so Makes sense. i have some homes so family-based homes and then i've got five different flats as well nice yeah. nice so with these flats are you airbnb in them are you doing long-term tenants what's your strategy so my current strategy is basically long-term families, long-term tenants, and just general renting. So I have people who are in for three years. So my model's a little bit different in terms of I'm not just about... I love revenue, love revenue. Who doesn't love revenue? But for me, it's about kind of providing homes in my city. So all my homes are in South London and just kind of providing a base for many people. That was my personal goal when it came to investing um, when I built my portfolio. And we've had this discussion in that I'm, I'm someone who I have no mortgages on any of them. I haven't Ooh, done the say leverage. Say that again. Say no that mortgage. again. I have no mortgages Ooh, on those homes. I like the way that sounds. Yeah, it's, it's, I can sleep peacefully at night. Um, but that's my personal strategy, which isn't the best one in terms of, you know, money making. But it's a strategy that works for me. And it was how I wanted to invest more in the kind of asset appreciation and um, the rental income as well. Okay, so no debt. Debt free, basically, yeah. and just nothing but cash flow coming in. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That's amazing. Yeah. That's goals. It's, it's goals. That's definitely but goals. I have to take it take it back a bit, and I think like it's great to like come in and be like, so yeah, got property, whatever. But I'll be really honest in that I've been lucky in that I've been able to have cash flow up front. So I think with anyone who's thinking about you know investing and and getting into this space, it's to really think about how can you generate revenue at first to actually make your first in investments versus just thinking about leverage straight away, especially if you're someone who's more risk averse. So, so that was my let's get three tips. Goal. Give our audience three tips on how they can get cash flow up front so they can go and buy some investment properties. I'm going to sound like Kim Kardashian. I'm going to say work. <laughs> so like, I know that's so cringe. <laughs> Every, one, everybody hates that. Like, but either you're working to, you know, a high paid job that gives you enough cash and you're saving, or you're looking at increasing your sources of revenue from other platforms. So is it a side business? business? Are you consulting? Are you freelancing? Are you upping your cash outside of your job to create a pool of income that you can use to now start investing? And there's so many ways now to actually make money outside of just the role. I'm not going to tell people exactly what to do, but you know, get to work basically multiple streams of income one stream yeah. of income is too close to being broke as i like to say so Ooh, like you that. definitely have to go out here and run some place 100 percent. so anton let's let's move on to you real quick yeah um you have a, a a pretty i told you the number backstage and you was like no that number's wrong that's old right <laughs> so let's talk about your portfolio what does your portfolio look like right now um it's with the, including the new developments that i've got um, happening at the moment just under 22 million pound per portfolio that I have right now. Woo! 22 million. Wow, that's incredible. Let's talk about your development, right? What are you developing right now? Um, I've got, um, there's two different types of developments. One's a semi-commercial conversion from um, three-story um, commercial office block into five apartments with a downstairs, with a ground floor commercial unit that stays. Um, that's a lot more straightforward because we're not having to adjust the structure. It's just conversion. Um, it's a lot more, lot easier, cheaper, quicker to do as well. Um, and the other one is a ground zero um, luxury apartment of 10, 10 apartments. The permit process here in the UK, how is it, is it a long, strenuous process to get approved plans and permits to do, do construction? Do you know what? If you've got the right team in place, it's not so difficult. So if you've got, obviously, you need your architect um, to draw your plans, make sure that you know that the area is viable for development as well. Then you go to um, the local planning authority, like LPA, um, and, and you basically submit your plans, your drawings, and see if you can have it converted or built from scratch. So it's, it's normally an eight-week process from when you submit your plans to when it's accepted, if it's accepted straight away. 
Damn, only eight weeks? Eight weeks, yeah. Shit, in America, it takes like eight years sometimes to get a plan. Mm. But, but you know what? If you're doing permitted development, it's a four-week process. So it's four weeks for permitted, eight weeks for planning. Damn. Yeah. We got to come to the UK, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you hire your construction people, right? Because a lot of people here might be intimidated about doing projects at a scale like you're doing. So can you give us a couple tips um, that you use to find the right contractors and builders to help you scale these projects? Do you know what? Um, it's very, very important to find the right builders and contractors for in my, you know, what I do in terms of adding value and building properties. There's two ways to make money um, for what I've discovered. One is buying at the right price. Two is building or renovating at the right price. So your construction team is critical because not only do you need to make sure that it's actually build, build worthy, you need to make sure that the numbers come in right. Otherwise, it's a false economy completely. So, you know, you use some common sense tactics like going to um, uh, websites that uh, like rated people or uh, find my builder and you basically get two, three, four quotes. Don't always go for the cheapest quote because maybe the reflection of the work is in the price. So, so you also need to get testimonies. You need to see some other work that they've done previously. And, and don't be afraid to ask lots of questions. Remember that it's your money and they're, you know, you're the client. So you should ask lots of questions to make sure you're comfortable because once it's built wrong, it's too late. It's definitely too late, too late. Patricia, on Market Mondays two weeks ago, um, great episode, by the way. Thank you. Um, shout out to Market Mondays. Um, you were talking about auctions yeah. and you're purchasing real estate using auction websites. Can you give us a little bit more details about these auctions out here? Yeah, so in the UK, there are a lot of homes that do go on auction and often they're called probate homes. So maybe it was an elderly person, they've passed away, they have no family. And every single day there are homes that are going for like 100,000 to to less than that in London. So actually last night I went to a home I just bought um, for, I bought it for 173,000 pounds. It's in Croydon. And that's probably gonna be worth about 300,000, a two bedroom flat. Wow. Um, but what, with these websites, what it is is that there's councils and probate homes that they want to actually get people to purchase these homes that can give them the love and the work that they need. So um, I bought three now at auction, which is basically homes that are, they're more affordable. They're not always mortgageable. So if they don't have a bathroom, if they don't have a kitchen, they're deemed unmortgageable and they're a bit high risk. But um, they, there's a lot of opportunity in those homes to add value. And also if you're you know, interested in just renting, then do them up and you can get renters in really quickly if in, they're in key areas. What websites can we go to to find these auctions? Yeah. So most of the um, estate agents usually have an auction arm. So Savills is a very big estate agent, but there's also Savills Auctions. So there's Barnard Marcus as well. There's Barnard Marcus au Auctions. There's Lond Auction House London. So there's multiple places where you can find auction properties. Another thing I often do is, um, one, they host auctions at usually at the end of the month, and they usually put auction properties on right move about two weeks before the auction happens so if you search houses like by lowest price often the auction houses you'll see them just on right move or zoopla because they're usually the lowest house prices in a particular area so that's a great way to find auction property a lot of gems a lot of gems i hope y'all were taking notes on yeah. that one she gave just a lot of find the cheapest house and find then it. just search from there and, and just keep forward. searching and searching. Exactly. So they put these homes on the auction site. So you have the address and everything. So you're able to go see the property so, prior to. So they do open day. So they advertise a house about two weeks before they do an auction at the end. Most auction houses do it at the end of the month, every single month. So you'll see their lots. So you can search a lot and then you can go in and see the lot. Um, and often you'll find that a number of people queuing outside who are like, walking around the house looking at is this a can I afford this is this a good property and so you'll get to know if there's lots of bidders often you might see a house advertised so that house I bought was advertised at 110,000 pounds two bedroom flat in London like people don't think that's possible it is and then that went for I bought it for 173,000 so 
um, well, I was and that one's worth what three? That's going to be worth once it's done. It's worth three hundred thousand. How much? How much do you have to put in repairs? I'm going to put twenty thousand in to repair it. Damn. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So you're going to be in this thing what one ninety three somewhere around there one ninety five? Yeah, probably. But <laughs> I won't sell the house, so I don't sell. I just rent and then just let the asset appreciate. Maybe we're worth like half a million in like seven years or something. Certified but, gem dropper. I like yeah. that right there. <laughs> I'm about to go to these auctions. <laughs> <laughs> There's right. like so many homes as well, like all over London, all over the UK. I think people are a bit scared of auctions, but they just kind of need to like explore, search and go visit these homes. So how does, for the people who are scared of auctions, right, how do they get prepared? Like what, what are some tips? You see, I like to ask about tips, right? Yeah. What tips can you give us so we can prepare for these auctions? It would be to go and visit those homes, just see what you think about them first. Find out, go, go over the surveyor. They'll be able to identify if the house is like sturdy enough and isn't going to crumble and fall. Like, surveyor. That's very important if you don't know property. Because if it's got, say, Japanese knotweed in the garden, you can't get a mortgage on a house with that weed. So really? You, yes. It's, Why? Because it's like an illegal weed, but you won't know that until, <laughs> yeah, I know this is random, but this is again from experience in that I almost bought a house that was meant to be on a mortgage and the surveyor said there's that weed in the garden, no bank will mortgage a house with that weed in the garden. That's crazy. Yeah, but go see the houses and um, try it out, basically. Go see the houses, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. So let's talk about scaling, right? You, on the opposite side of Patricia, she doesn't like debt, but you've leveraged debt to build your massive portfolio. So you're doing a lot of cash-out refinances. Um, can you explain what a cash-out refinance is and have you used it to help scale your portfolio? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, obviously, Patricia and I had this very interesting conversation backstage, and obviously what she's doing is amazing because the money in the property is better than the money in the bank. Facts. That's a, that's a fact. Yeah. So there's, there's no argument there. But if you want to scale quickly and exponentially, you leverage. That's known. Um, and again, not to knock people that don't want to do that because some people that like to be risk adverse and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to scale, this is what you do. So obviously, you, I, me, my particular examples is um, I'll buy a property uh, which, which I know is at the right price, so I'll find a way to add value. So it could be a, I talk about this a lot on Insta, Instagram, like a low lease apartment, for example. If it's under 75 years, you can't get a lease on it, which means the value drops ridiculously. If you speak to the freeholder uh, and you get a lease extension, negotiate that before, then you can add the value by purchasing an extension of leasehold and then revaluing the property straight away. That's even without a renovation. If you renovate on top and you find a rundown apartment, then you've got even more gains to make. So that's just one example. You've obviously got conversions. Uh, an example I did last year was I bought a seven bedroom house over four stories in Greenwich and converted it into four luxury apartments that was bought with planning. Um, so I look for property, properties with planning permission already existing because time is money also. So I don't like to do, be too speculative and go and get option properties. I like to buy property with planning. Um, and any other renovation that's a distressed property or non mortgageable property, putting the cash in and buying it up front. Um, adding the values, all of the value markers, the pr basic principles to add value and literally remortgage it. What percentage will the bank allow you to take out in equity? Like uh, in America, to, they'll probably go 70, 75% of the value. Yeah. Is it the same here in the UK? For investment properties, up to 75%. Basically, yeah. So up to 75% now, is it hard to get approved for that type of funding? H have you seen it in, in your, your line of business? Uh, you, you can't just walk into it. Um, th there's stress testing involved as well. I mean, it's a lot easier than if you're getting a residential mortgage, then you do. it's based very much on income. If it's to do with an investment property, it's based very much on what the affordability is um, from rent versus the, the expense, the overhead. And then they also check to see if you have any, any means to cover a mortgage in a void period, because there's no good if you, you have a plan that you have a tenant that's going to pay the mortgage, but what if you don't have that tenant? What if the tenant doesn't pay? What if you have to serve them a Section 21, um, which is basically an eviction process? Uh, you need to have means to be able to afford that property. So, so regarding the, the leverage question, um, I make sure that before I buy a property, whatever, whatever strategy it is, there is over 25%. I aim for 30% because if it goes slightly pair and 5% is, is reduced, I always get my return, always get the money back, remortgage, capital appreciation over a long term, 25% equity built in, cash flow and asset. That's it. How long does it take to evict someone? 
uh, it, it was it was two months. Um, COVID changed things somewhat, uh, and it changed to like four months. I'm not sure at the moment because luckily for me, I've not had to evict anybody for a while. But it, it was traditionally two months that may have changed. That may have changed. But but, that, but but that that is two months to get to court. So then you have to get to court, and then you have to get the bailiffs to come in and remove that person. So it isn't. It was never just two months. It's two months to get to that next stage. So it could take up to six months on average. If it goes wrong, it could take half a year to get them out. But six months is not bad. In New York, it takes two years. Oh really? Yeah. Exactly. Now why do you want to come oh, to no, you? Then? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, six months is a cakewalk. <laughs> you know wow. what I'm saying? That's pretty amazing. Americans, let's tap in on the UK market. This is incredible. And we were also assuming you were talking about the legal means, obviously, as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something, but um, let me not. <laughs> so, all right, we're running, we running on time right now, but I want to ask you both this question, right? Everyone's talking recession. There's a lot of fear-mongering headlines out there. People are scared. What are your thoughts, and especially when it comes to real estate? Everybody feels like the market is going to crash. Um, from what I'm reading, that's all over UK news, is that the housing market here is going to crash. So I want to ask both of you guys, are you still going to buy right now, or are you waiting for the crash to see what happens? Let's start with you, Patricia. So my strategy is more like long term and hold. So I am happy to invest now. Obviously, it's all about affordability. So interest rates have gone up. Um, I will just do the math. Can I afford it at this rate? And how long can I afford it for if I'm getting a mortgage? And um, also, I know that, you know, recessions happen. They're, they've been here before they'll be here again. Now is as good as a time as any to make your first investment if you can afford it. And so that's why personal finance and personal math to understand your own numbers is really important versus just waiting for what the news is gonna tell you or what the new president or prime minister is gonna be like. That really doesn't impact me as much versus me understanding my own revenue. So I am investing probably more so now as prices are falling because of the interest rate increases. Love it. Yeah, MG, as we said earlier on about one of the ways to, to make money in property is to buy at the right price. Yeah. And obviously, yes, interest rates are scary and I understand all the scaremongering and obviously the affordability for people and that makes perfect sense. But as an investor, you want to buy right. So my advice is Q2 next year. So from April, inflation is squeezing people at this moment and there's going to be a lot of investment properties that are going to go into foreclosure and going to go on the auctions, for yeah. example, if they need a quick sell. And um, that's the time to buy. So I would say... Definitely be more, I, as an investor perspective, be more aggressive now because you have deals. You're going to get things at the right price. You're going to find a lot of distressed sellers where you can, can, can create the opportunity. And it, it's not our fault that we've got the dustbin and brush and that we're sweeping up. It, the, the, this is going to happen anyway. It, it, it's the cycle. People are going to go bust. They're going to get squeezed by inflation. The properties are going to go on the, on the markets. And that's the time to buy and add value. And you hold on two years uh, capital appreciation skyrockets again once the inflation sorts itself out. So you feel as if when these interest rates start expiring, because we learned earlier, two-year, five-year terms, right? So when those mortgages are coming expired, you feel a lot of those landlords are going to foreclose? A hundred percent. And anybody now that's, that's obviously scared of the interest rates, the banks are trying to lock them into five-year fix, I wouldn't do that at all. We're not going to have five years of seven, eight, nine percent. It's not going to happen. The days of one and a half and two percent are probably over for, for now. Big maybe, facts. For sure. You're probably looking, when things recover, you'll be looking at numbers starting with a three, which is not so bad. Um, but if you lock into a five year, in two and a half years from now, when the numbers start with a three and you're locked into a six, yeah. <laughs> you're going to be vexed, pissed, annoyed. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> but, you can always, but you can always refinance. Um, yeah, but you refinance on a fixed period, you've got a penalty clause. So, so, mm. so, so how a penalty clause works is that if you have a five-year mortgage, generally five-year fixed, you have a five-year, 5% five penalty if you try to get out in four years is a 4% and so on. Yeah. So that's not a great idea necessarily because if you've got big numbers on your mortgage, two, three percent is a huge number. So you need to be very careful. Again, just a quick gem, as, as you call it, okay. regarding investors that want to get in and out with their money, Buy on variable rates. Don't buy fixed rates because you have no penalty clauses. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. If you want to get in and out in six to nine months, do not get a fixed mortgage. Get a variable. Get your work done. F flip the finance out. Love it. I love it. Love it. Um, yeah, clap that up for that. Big gems. 
So, all right. So we're running up on time, but I want to give you guys, you know, your final word. Um, this market, 2023, what do you see the outlook for your business? Are you going to continue to scale and buy more flats? Are you going to buy more multifamilies? Are you going to do some development, Patricia? Where do you see yourself in 2023 investing? So one, for me, it's all about income on the front. So continuing my personal businesses and what I do to generate income. And I think anybody in this era really should be thinking about cash. Cash is king. That's what we will use to be able to purchase any asset. So um, that's something that's important to me. But actually, one thing that I'm really interested in is buying land. Um, land is a really good opportunity that is kind of underutilized. There is a lot of land that's, be, that's available, but people are scared. They're like, like, there's no house on this land or the house is run down but you don't have to pay stamp duty on well you pay stamp duty on the value of the land so imagine you buy land for um one you know 1.5 million or 1.7 million you only pay a hundred and only that's only is a big number <laughs> big word but you pay a hundred and we like that you pay a hundred and fifty seven thousand but if you had a five million pound house on that land, the stamp duty you have to pay is 400,000. So you're able to make huge savings. So I'm really interested in land buying and home building on the land. I love that, I love that. What do you see your business in 2023? Uh, 2023, two aspects to my property side of, th of things. The first one is, as I said earlier on, I've got my dustbin and brush ready and waiting for, for Q2. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> we, we were sweeping up um, and um, also as well I'm use that sweeping up I like that <laughs> also as well is, is kind of giving back to people that, that are trying to get into the game through my mentor academy program that's, that's launching at the end of this year but going into 2023 um, and that's a, a platform that I have where people are going to be getting involved in property JVing um, subscription services content Q&A's from industry experts and me sharing a lot of my personal experiences uh, oh, not to mention my book that's coming out next year as well, mm -hmm. which is How to Buy. How to buy. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Um, my, my book next year is um, How to Buy a Seven Million Pound Mansion for Free. And that's coming out we next like year. We like that. I need that. It's if it's coming. free, it's for me, brother. It's serious. It's I'm coming. definitely going to buy that book. <laughs> so, so that's what I'm focusing on next year. And it's all property related. Um, so the synergy is there. But again, I'm focused on trying to help people um, do what I've done and realize that you can come from nothing and be a star. We can, we're all capable of it. Every one of us is capable. Love it. Love it. So we got less than a minute. Um, first of all, thank you guys for coming to Invest Fest. You guys dropped a lot of gems today. Final words and tell them how to find you. Yeah, obviously, and my Instagram handle, guys, is Antoine Dixon Bellot. Um, and you can find me on Mentor Academy, which is www.mentoracademy.co.uk. Uh, other than that, you see me in the street, say hi, I'm going to say hi back. So that's it. <laughs> Simple. Patricia? The same. <laughs> but you can find me on Patricia Bright. I am on Instagram and on YouTube. And, I mean, I think that these, you guys who are in the room now, are the ones who are going to make the change in the future. And if you're investing in being here now, you're investing into your future. So it's really powerful that you're getting the tea. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our panelists, Antoine, Patricia. We thank y'all for your thank opportunity you. to be here. Thank you so much.